You are now listening to The I. Walter Show. Real talk about nothing. Good morning, everyone. This is I, Walter. Yes, I am not prepared. I didn't play my Superman theme in the beginning of this show just because it's so early in the morning. It is Tuesday, September 29th, on twenty uh, the year of 2015. Um, yes, I didn't expect to do the show. There was some story I really wanted to do, and um, now I have to figure out where I put it because I added a bunch of stuff I didn't think I was going to add. Uh, that theme was, um, it was from... Batman Arkham City. It's the main theme. I guess it's a video game. I was actually looking personally for the theme from... Because I finally finished that Batman... uh, You know, the two series from 1943 and 48. It kind of... The last two episodes made no sense at all on the second series. Otherwise, it was actually really good. Now, there was a few of those episodes, because they're from the 40s, um, that actually I... Have to confess, I dozed off and almost fell asleep. I told a friend that because he he gave me um, the heads up. He says, "Yeah, I I gotta you know uh, respect you for watching these old shows." He said, "I would have no interest." And he's like, "Dude, you don't understand. I was falling asleep quite a few times. I almost like passed out and uh, didn't wake up watching those old Batman's." Anyway, this caught my attention, so this became um, the start of my show tonight. I have no um, no theme tonight, trust me. Um, and I had a bunch of stories I posted, and I never expected to use them, so I didn't pull them up. It was on iHorror, though, and now you can buy a Jason Voorhees coffee table. This just went up tonight. Um, it's the ultimate conversation piece. Yes, it's a... It's a coffee table where the top is ripped out and you got part of Jason Voorhees, uh, you know, basically um, you can see down. It's almost like like you're looking down, not at a coffee table, but a but a coffin where he's like uh, facing upwards. It's pretty scary looking. And then there's a machete on the side of the coffee table. And the other side says Friday the 13th uh, with hockey mask. 
But yeah, it's it's an actual coffee table. Um, it says it's six hundred dollars with a glass topper and five hundred dollars without the glass topper. I think you probably want the glass topper, otherwise you really can't use the freaking coffee table. So it is very cool looking. It's just obviously quite a bit of money too. Um, I guess that's not too bad in some ways, considering all the detail put into this damn thing. Um, yeah, so once again, I, I don't have anything prepared, um, just to let people know. Oh, um, so I'm just going to read what I see. I normally do that, but this is more so, um, going in that direction. Burger King, I seem to actually advertise the one around now, so we have a Burger King right down the street from where I live. It says Burger King, Burger King's Halloween Whopper is great for Halloween because the bun is basically black. The new Burger King, uh, Burger King claims to be um the new burger from burger king claims to be halloween whopper um all because it's got a black bun that's basically what it says i mean that's on bloody disgusting.com i don't know what that would taste like i guess it's just food color and i assume um it says ingredients that represent of uh, halloween is basically a1 steak sauce a one oh no it's questioning that and it says nah give it a year round that'd be nice though so basically it's just because it has a black bun it's basically a regular whopper on a black bun um it's sesame seed bun but still I don't know what that would taste like um I don't know I I just thought there might be more to that story but no not really um there was something once again on. Uh, well, actually, this was besthorrormovies.com. They were talking about, once again, Celebrity Deathmatch. So, um, yeah, so according to Hollywood Reporter MTV2 has handed the pilot order to Celebrity Deathmatch Revival Series. Um, well, I mentioned that before, so not important. Um, there was something else... I think they finally put it to rest. No puns intended. And, oh, yeah. Morgan Creek confirms they will not remake The Exorcist. Thank goodness. Uh, there was worrisome speculation over the past weeks. By the way, that did I mention bloodydisgusting.com? It was on. Over the past weeks, Morgan Creek has um, was basically talking about um, remaking um, – the Exorcist. It says Creek was in talks to sell the domestic library of seventy-eight films, which included rights to The Exorcist. However, director William uh, Fr- uh, Freaklin voiced his doubts that such a move would result in a remake, stating that they did not own the rights to the movie, but only the so-called sequels. So I didn't think Morgan Creek actually did. The original one. So, um, in so many words or less, uh, feel okay, uh, safe that apparently, that, oh, okay, well, basically Morgan Creek, well, the one who's going to be remaking a lot of these films, cannot do the original, um, what do you call it, the original um, Exorcist. I didn't mean to make that pause like that. I just couldn't help it because I did lose my train of thought. Um, now, I just want to – I actually haven't listened to Stern for uh, – Stern. I haven't listened to Rush in a while, and I kind of regret it now because there was something actually posted on Brett Bart. This was one of the stories I actually would have read. It says Limbaugh – uh, Rush Limbaugh, Trump tax plans similar to Reagan's 1980 tax proposals. So this would be really good. This is a really lengthy article, but basically Rush went into it. And if I'm looking at this right, if he is planning, you know, or basically saying he would do the same tax, uh, you know, basically, I guess, tax cuts that Reagan did, this would be really good. I hope people would probably reconsider even having Rush as a president. Uh, Rush as a president. I'm sorry. I'm all over the place. As as Donald Trump as a president because, you know, Reagan actually was into politics, even though he was an entertainer. Um, I don't know how much Trump truly knows about politics, but 
if he's actually going to go in that direction, I think that would be really uh, cool. Again, I don't want to read this whole thing, um, but I would recommend people, if you don't want to read, because this is pretty in-depth, and this was from yesterday, um, but you can read it on Brett Bart, and um, I think it's Bright Bart, because I, I think one friend connect, uh, corrected me. I think it's Bright Bart. I, I say Brett Bart, but Bright Bart, Brett Bart. Anyway, there is a very good article, and again, it's about um, Trump's tax proposal plans. And I actually, again, if this is the case, I do not have a problem with it at all. This is actually what I wanted to talk about. Um, I, I, it's been killing me if I didn't do this. This article, a friend sent me, so thank you, Todd Thomas. And it was on PIX 11, but it was right around here. Babysitter charged with assaulting autistic boy by ripping his teeth out. I, I, and this is around here. It's in Narstown, PA. So um, he didn't actually rip the kid's teeth out, but he knocked the, this poor kid who's autistic his teeth out of his mouth. So that's not any better. Anyway, it's and, and you know, you never hear about anything from around here, but this is like PIX 11, which is not around here. But this article, which was dated uh, yesterday, yeah, so it was dated yesterday, it was from my hometown of Narstown. Narstown, PA, a man was charged with assaulting a four-year-old boy with autism, including pulling three of his teeth out while babysitting him last summer. Authorities in Montgomery County said the 27-year-old Nicholas uh, Kernshell of East Greenville was charged with aggravated assault endangering the welfare of a child in related offenses. Authorities said that the child's mother brought him to Upper Perkiome Police in July, along with a plastic bag containing the three bloody uh, but intact teeth. So maybe they could, sometimes they can put them back in, I think. Depends how they were taken out. Um, they said that uh, Kirchnell, Kirchnell hit the boy identified as JN and took his, the teeth out. Uh, Defense attorney Patrick uh, McMenon Jr. on Monday called the child's injuries an unfortunate accident that occurred when he slipped at Kirchnell, uh, who was helping him out of bed to use the bathroom. That's a bunch of bullshit. Sorry. But, yeah, that is bullshit, though. The guy's, uh, his defense attorney is saying it was an accident, basically. How could that be an accident? He knocked the kid's teeth out of his mouth. Um, I'm not going to read this, so to speak, but it was on NME, and it caught my attention tonight when I was looking for stories, which I didn't know I was going to do, but Slipknot's, Slipknot, the group, Corey Taylor set to star in Doctor Who. Can you believe that? The guy from Slipknot is going to be in Doctor Who. Metal singer will lead his voice to the Fisher King character described as the alien warlord. So I didn't read this until just this second. Slipknot foreman Corey Taylor will appear in the upcoming episode of Doctor Who. The Mirror recently reported that the metal singer will voice the character of the Fisher King in, in an episode which is will air next Saturday, October 3rd, which I'll be at a concert, unfortunately. Um, the character has been described as an alien warlord. Taylor, a keen of fan, a keen fan of the BBC show, has since confirmed the news via Twitter, writing, "You have no idea how hard it is to uh, to keep this awesome secret." So he was really psyched about doing it. See, I didn't realize is Slipknot like actually is that guy a British? I thought Slipknot was like an American band. Uh, see the tweet and photos of Taylor on the Doctor Who set uh, below. So I thought that was the new TARDIS. Um, yeah, that is really, really cool. Um, i got to give that guy credit. Um, definitely something different. Um, so that that is awesome. Yeah, you know, got to give the guy a high five for that. Um they keep on posting about uh, how many days left for, until St- uh, Star Wars Episode Seven. It's just 
it's kind of funny. Um, yeah, I'm I'm just trying to find things to uh, read. Honestly, um, they had something on Me TV with a picture from my favorite Martian. I remember watching that show when I was a kid. So, and there was another story. It's been a while since they've kind of died down on the stories, but comicbookmovie.com had a story on Jared Leto reveals just how deranged his Joker will be in the Suicide Squad. The Oscar winner actor and 32nd to Mars frontman Jared Leto to clearly is clearly going to deliver one of the most disturbed versions of the Joker to date in next year's um, version of um, The Suicide Squad. So that is pretty cool, I guess. I mean, it's kind of... I saw the previews, and it did look really good. So it's kind of caught my attention. Um, going to be between... I'm just trying to see if there's anything else worth reading. Um, it says during a recent fan Q&A, the actor commented on just how crazy he's going to be between the Suicide Squad, squad cast mates, rats, and footage where seen, we've seen of him on set in the comic con trailer. It is clear that Jared Leto's Joker is going to perhaps be the craziest version of the character to grace the big screen to date. I won't read any more, so... I wasn't too impressed at first of what he looked like, but when I saw the previews for the movie, it actually did look very interesting. So, um, yeah. Hey, if you're um, if you're a Marilyn Manson fan, by the way, folks, there was a story. Uh, actually, I think it was from Marilyn Manson's. Probably he has a Facebook page, but it said uh, basically. He's basically talking about Rammstein, and that was kind of cool. I watched part of it. I didn't watch the whole thing. That was like yesterday at some point. And by the way, um, I really missed just yesterday because we had an overcast, uh, something different. But it was about um, some type of eclipse. Was it eclipse or the the moon would have appeared like uh, an orange, I guess, or red. But we had an overcast, so I couldn't see it. Um, I think that was yesterday, or is that actually Sun? Well, yeah, that was Sunday. Was yesterday, or the day before? I should say, not yesterday, the day before. Sorry about that. I really lose track of time. Um, again, I don't really have too much, so I just wanted to mainly the the main story I wanted to talk about, which would only have taken a few seconds, but you know, I have to. Is that babysitter who knocked out that autistic kid's teeth? That was pretty bad. Um, anyway, it was a, a story on the Daily Mail, I, and it says, Has NASA found flowing water on Mars? Space Agency uh, poised to announce a major science finding from the Red Planet. I keep on thinking that there's life on that pla- life on Mars. No puns intended, because that was the name of the show. NASA called... I'm going to just read the bullet points. NASA called the press conference for today's entitled Mars Mystery Solved. Space agencies have ple- pledged to unveil the major science finding at an event. Many things scientists are due to announce the discovery of flowing water. If that is the case, then the discovery would be the first of its kind. Flow and water also raised the prospect of discovering alien life on Mars. And that was on the Daily Mail UK as of... Well, it's got today's date, but I think that was actually yesterday's news. No, actually it was a couple days ago. So, um, I wish I had more stories actually to read, but unfortunately I really don't. Um, I just wanted to make my uh, voice heard um oh yeah actually i forgot about this this was actually i put this on facebook because it was just a very good story or i shared it uh, i hope i get his name right brian silva uploaded a video of homeless father you know he's basically trying to just see uh do a, an experiment so he first plays um a drug addict he has a sign that says he's a homeless drug addict and this was in New York City, and he got tons of money. Like, people were dropping money off left and right. 
Now, you can say, which could be true. Well, it is probably true. Um, you can make people see what you want them to see. Like, there could have been something he's not. Uh, re- you know, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. Let me put it that way. That he can just get what he wants people to see um, out of this video that he kind of condensed. But then he had another sign he held up for quite a long time, like a, about a couple of hours. And he tried another exper- experiment because it was called, the video is called Homeless Father versus Homeless Drug Addict Social Experiment. This was on July. Um, why does he keep on say July 29th? It was actually the 28th that I saw this. So um, the experiment showed when he was just basically looking for money for drugs. Yeah, people gave him money. They gave him like tons of cash. Um, But then, yeah, okay, here we go. It says now one hour with the homeless girl. So it was about an hour. Nobody would acknowledge that it was a homeless man trying to look for money for his homeless kid, which was, you know, was staged acted on the middle of in New York City. Let me see what the sign says real quick. Um, I can't read it. Homeless single father needs money for family. It's basically this little girl. And she's a cute as a button girl. So um, the thing that really caught my heartstrings and um, why I would recommend watching this for a good reason was this homeless woman. It was like a young girl. She had no money. She didn't have a, two pennies probably rubbed together. This girl like was like basically had no money and she stopped and she felt so bad for him and what appeared to be his, you know, this, uh, Brian Silva, um, video, I should say, cause I don't even know if that was the guy's name, but he was doing this experiment. So this whole, this girl who had no money, she felt so bad after an hour of just people walking by. And she says, why well, I'm, I'm homeless myself. I have no money. She didn't look like she was homeless, but she basically um, had no money. And she felt so bad. She said, well, this is all I have, but I have to give it to you. This poor girl, um, she's actually walking with a a dog. So maybe she wasn't homeless. She just didn't really have much money at all. She was down on her luck, and she felt so bad for him and this girl, this little girl, that she says, this is all I have, but I think you can use it more so than I can. And that really choked me up. And this is in New York City. So this girl gave whatever she had, feeling bad for him and this little girl. And he felt so bad that he didn't even let her walk two feet. And he says, listen, this is just an experiment. And he said, "I out of an hour of sitting here with everybody just pretending I'm not here with this little girl supposed to be in his daughter you're the only one who gave whatever you had as far as money you gave it to us and he says i tell you what i'm going to do and i think he gives her like i don't remember i think he gives her like about a hundred bucks and he says listen you need this mo- you need money more than i do he says i'm just doing a social experiment and yeah this girl even says can i say a prayer for you she felt so bad and it was so heart-wrenching i usually don't get taken that in that easily and with these videos this one really got my attention so i'm going to see if it comes up because i can't play the sound right now um but this guy yeah it was like a few seconds he had a camera on this whole this whole ordeal and he just it broke you know it broke my heart this is a thing especially what i what stuff that goes on at work it just broke my heart that people are that well, in general, are just that ignorant. And this one girl who had like literally this the stuff on the shirt on her back and not much of anything. And, you know, I'm sorry, but um, she was willing to give whatever she had because she fell ba- away. Oh, Let me see what it says. Yeah, he wrote on the end. Sometimes those who have less are the ones who give them uh, give more. And I guess that's true, too. I probably really do believe, well, obviously in this case, but it says, please share at Kobe uh, person, P-E-R-S-I-N. So check it out. It says, please share at, you know, at sign C-O-B-Y-P-E-R-S-I-N. Yeah, that really got to me. That actually broke my heart just to think about that. 
Oh, and by the way, another thing I was making a joke yesterday, but apparently um, something different. I apologize to change it so frequently. But it was uh, Kevin Smith and Jason Mewes apparently are in Australia right now, I think. And he got a photo in front of the fucking TARDIS. So I was really pissed. I was very jealous, actually. Um, Yeah, it says he wrote on his Facebook page, this is me and Jason Mewes off to meet a dialect at uh, AB at, you know, the... um, Number sign ABC. So that's uh, ABC is actually Australia's network. Um, it took us some time to get there because we stopped to see the doctor. And he's in front of the fucking TARDIS, though, folks. I'm not even kidding. It's very funny. So it's very cool, but it's very funny. Um, so, yeah, there, there's my uh, little bit of a different story. Um. Again, I, I don't have, like, a really definite, definitive uh, storyline tonight. There was something that was cute. Also, um, Legendary Finds, I basically borrowed this from, or shared it from somebody else's web link. And it's, it's uh, shared Legendary Finds video. And this guy gets his little girl... Um, one of those little go-karts, but it's in the shape of, like, a very expensive sports car. But it's, like, the size of a little girl. It's really tiny. I'm trying to figure out what kind of car it is. It's like, um, you know, like something like The Prisoner would have. You know, like that that car. Have you ever watched The Prisoner? That's in the beginning of the... T- it's almost on that line. But it's a little go-kart for a little kid. Like, so... But it's got a real engine in there. And she's, like, driving on the grass. I thought it was so cute, too. So this is not my normal stuff. I know. I realize that. So I, you know, I don't know what else to say. I did add a couple of stories, but nothing I can really read, though. So. Um, unless you, the only thing I can tell people to do is just check out my Facebook page, because I did put some stuff on there just now. And there's some, I guess, promoting um, Back to the Future coming out on Blu-ray and it was Back to the Future Trilogy video, and it's a thing they get. Um, who was the actor from Taxi who plays the doc? Um, they got some, like, new uh, video or um, commercial for that. Back to the Future Trilogy uploaded a new video, Back to the Future Trilogy. Own it on Blu-ray on 1021. So that's October 21st. Great Scott, Doc Brown's back. Here's a uh, sneak peek from the new shortcoming exclusively to the Back to the Future 30th Anniversary Blu-ray and DVD trilogy. They did add a lot to it. It's just awfully expensive. Now, the only thing is, whatever happened to those fucking sneakers they were supposed to put out? Weren't they supposed to come out by now? Well, they never did. The laceless shoes. Um, So, I don't know. I would have liked to see those. As long as they weren't as expensive as those ones they did put out. So, anyway, folks, um, yeah, it's after five. So I'm going to give this a break. I got to go. Um, I doubt this was even 20 minutes today, but, hey, I'm doing you a favor to it, I guess. Well, obviously. So I um, apologize. I didn't. Oh, actually, wait. Before I leave, I do want to mention something. Um, seems like a lot of stuff I complain about at work is coming true. Um, my job, we have two people that work day shift i work second and um we've been getting a lot of problems at work and the apparently the bosses are clueless on why this is happening though this is what's funny so i'm just questioning because my job um we've been having a lot of you know i work at some company that everything has to be sterilized and cleaned and things have disappeared because they accidentally uh, speculation uh, speculation I have is it probably got thrown out accidentally, but this is stuff that, um, you know, people that we work for, um, like I said, I'm basically a janitor. I clean for these lab people, these people working in the labs, where some of their equipment got accidentally, perhaps, I can't prove it, got thrown out. So that's not cool. Um yeah, that's not cool at all, but I, I can't help but laugh at it because it's just pure stupidity. Um, and then our lab areas have been coming up left and right hot, 
And the funny thing is our um, our supervisors are totally perplexed. They don't know why the rooms are coming up hot. And it's like, you know, it's like looking at the answer and not seeing it because you don't want to see the truth. So that's a problem. And then things accidentally getting thrown out. And there's a whole plethora of other problems, and none of them are getting resolved. And all I get out of it is a bunch of ridicule by my other, you know, so-called um, co-workers of some sort. So their whole thing is, well, let's ostracize Walter even more. Let's even give him more of a hard time. Let's treat him like I picture in my mind. If you ever watched those old Frankenstein black and white horror movies, you know, from what was that, the 50s, where like the village people, the, the you know, not the group, but the villagers would chase Frankenstein into like this windmill and then they set it on fire and they burn uh, Frankenstein's creature in this windmill. Well, that would be me. I'd be the one chased up to the windmill. And then the villagers, which would be my fellow co-workers, are, you know, trying to torch the place with me in there because I am I am the um, the monster. I am the creature who has caused havoc. I am the monster who had killed the little girl in that movie um, and has set everything um, in havoc. But it's actually obviously not true. And now the place is just um, where I work in this particular area is just crumbling apart. And yet everybody is still perplexed on why it's happening. So anyway, um, that's my yelling point or my um, down, you know, my negative point for today. So um, it's just amazing how I don't know else to put it, how stupid people really are. Um, what else can I say? I mean, it's like it's pointing them right in the face. I mean, I don't know what else you can what, what else I can say. It's like. The answer is pointing you dead bullseye in the face, and you still have no clue on why you're having all these issues. And it actually has stopped production. Now, there, this is the funny part that they're clueless about. They said, oh, yeah, we're having a lot of problems. We can't make anything because we're having too much. Well, equipment's faulty. It's breaking down. They can't fix it. That's understandable. But they also said there's some type of thing where they're getting um, some type of uh, – I'm going to take an educated guess on what they were saying. So I am paraphrasing like mold or, or or something that they can't handle. They don't know why, though. Well, it's like, OK, you have people that are so-called doing janitorial work, but they're not doing it properly. And you're wondering why things are dirty. And I'm like thinking, OK, you can't see the issue. Then you find things that are missing. Well, this is partially the management's fault because these people weren't trained properly. Yes, most of this stuff is common sense. You don't need to be trained for it. But when you have this many problems, um, you, you know, the problem is it's going to end up – you can't do anything about it. You can't do anything about these people either accidentally throwing things away or not properly cleaning because it's just going to – it's going to blow up in your face – because what's going to end up happening, they could turn around and say, well, you never trained me. And they can go, uh, 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 well, you didn't train them. So, you know, that's on you. The only way you change this situation or take care of the problem if they do it again is you do train them. You do write them off on being trained because see what happens when you get trained on something. You have to sign basically papered it's uh you know some type of documentation that says yes i understand what my job entails um and i'm signing off that says that i I know what i'm doing so then a supervisor or the company can say okay you signed off on this you said you know what you're doing well right now they don't even have a leg to stand on so they're going to continue just to basically throw money in the garbage can because they can't do anything about it so anyway I forgot about that, too. I did want to put that in because this is my therapy as a show. And everyone, have a good morning. It is 5.13. I am signing off on this Tuesday morning of 
September 29th, 2015. It's almost October. So then you can see me on the big screen, at least for an advertisement if you go to the Colonial Theory or see me on one of those um, slide shots advertising my show. Have a good morning, everyone. I'm signing off.